In these stories, when you hear this cuckoo, turn the page. This story is called Colin Cucumber. Colin Cucumber couldn't cry, even though his leg hurt very much. He'd accidentally fallen over a brick, which someone had carelessly left lying on the garden path. I hope someone comes along soon to help me up, he thought. Roger Radish came skipping happily along the garden path, whistling to himself, as he often did. Suddenly, he saw poor Colin sitting on the ground and looking very sorry for himself. I've hurt my leg, he moaned, and I can't stand up. Roger dashed off to get help. Mark Marrow was crossing the lawn. Help, called Roger. Colin Cucumber's hurt his leg. Come quickly. Mark hurried to where Colin was sitting on the path. He knew exactly what to do. Go and ring for an ambulance and I will get a warm blanket, he said. Roger went to a nearby telephone box and dialed the number. I want an ambulance, quickly, he said. Please send it to the corner of the garden where the garden gang live. He put down the telephone and ran back to the path where he found Colin snugly wrapped in a warm blanket. Quite a crowd had gathered by this time. They all looked worried and chatted quietly to each other. Colin's leg was not hurting quite so much and he looked much more cheerful. Between you and me, I think by now he was quite enjoying all the fuss. Soon an ambulance came racing along the garden path with its sirens blaring. As it stopped beside the small crowd, two tomatoes jumped out with a stretcher and gently lifted Colin into the back of the ambulance. Mark Marrow also climbed in to keep him company. The doors were closed and away they went. It wasn't long before they reached the hospital and Colin Cucumber found himself riding on a trolley into the X-ray department. We're just going to take a picture of your leg to see if any bones are broken said a kind nurse. It will only take a minute. How Colin and Mark laughed when they saw the picture. They could see right through Colin's leg. They could also see a small crack in the bone. It's not too serious, said the doctor, but we will put a pot on your leg to make sure it heals quickly. Colin looked quite funny lying in bed with his pot leg in the air. Mark was allowed to stay and talk to him. You can go home tomorrow, said the doctor. We just want to make sure that your pot sets correctly. The next morning, an ambulance took Colin Cucumber back to the garden where all his friends were waiting to greet him. It's nice to be back he said shyly as he grinned round at everyone. I have to go back to the hospital in six weeks to have the pot taken off. When the six weeks were up, Colin went back to the hospital. He worried a little when the pot first came off and the doctor asked him to stand up. But soon he realised, to his delight, that... His leg was as good as new. When the music stops, 
turn your cassette over. fish. He had a beautiful fishing rod and a good strong net, of which he was very proud. His fishing began in the morning and carried on through to the evening. Sometimes he would fish through the night, but he never caught anything. One morning there had been a rainstorm and Patrick Pear hurriedly pulled on his fine blue Wellington boots and grabbed his fishing tackle. He dashed outside and began to fish in the many puddles left by the rain. Although he fished all day, he didn't catch anything. Another time, Mr. Rake the gardener left a watering can full of water on the garden path. Patrick Pear immediately got out his fishing rod and began to fish in the can of water. Two hours went by before Mr. Rake returned for his can, but poor Patrick didn't catch anything. The ornamental fountain often attracted Patrick. He would sit for hours on the rim, smiling to himself whilst he dangled his line hopefully into the clear, cool waters. He became soaked, and his wellington squelched with water. But the only thing he ever caught there was a cold. As the sun shone brightly one afternoon, the gardener's daughter left her cup of hot tea on the wall top while she went to look at a gorgeous butterfly. Before you could say, flying fish, Patrick was about to lower his line into the cup when luckily the girl returned and he ran off. It was early autumn. Already the leaves were beginning to change colour and the swallows were gathering together making ready to fly to warmer countries. Miss Delia Damson decided to call a meeting of the Garden Gang Committee. Be at the greenhouse by six o'clock, she said. I have an idea I want to discuss. By six o'clock that evening, the garden gang was standing excitedly outside the greenhouse. This is my idea, said Miss Delia Damson. I think that the garden gang should be taken on a day trip to the seaside before winter. Is it a good idea? she asked. Yes, yes, they all cried and began to make immediate plans. It was decided that they should hire Cardew Carrot's blue bus and that they should take a picnic tea. I will buy everyone an ice cream, said Penelope Strawberry, and they all smiled at her shyly. Please may I take my fishing rod, said Patrick's small voice from the back. Of course, they said. It was a beautiful day as the garden gang packed themselves into Cardew's bus. The chattering and laughing could be heard all over the garden. When they finally set off, Patrick's fishing rod was sticking out of the sunshine roof. There was no room inside for it. Soon they were at the seaside. The bus door opened and they all spilled out onto the seashore. There were donkeys to ride, boats to row, and candy floss and ice cream to eat. But you can all guess what Patrick did, can't you? That's right, he went to the sea and began to fish. 
A crowd of sleepy but very happy fruit and vegetable people slowly climbed into the blue bus. It was evening, and everyone was ready for home. What a wonderful day it had been. Where's Patrick? they all called. Here he comes, said Cardew. Patrick was wearing an enormous smile and carrying a fish.